I'm in a motherfucking headband. This is how you know things are not going great. I'm in a motherfucking headband. I'm a headband girl this week. The blow dry did not survive the uh, Santa Ana winds and rainfall of yesteryear. So the hair, the blow dry is a little puffy and the hairline is a little kinky. So I had to wear my J. Crew headband, which is not going to fare well on the tick talks, but I need the hair off my face because I start sweating and I just, I, I don't have an iron and I don't have a blow dryer, so I can't fix what's happening. It's not good. It's not cute. I'm not nailing it. I don't have the bone structure for a headband. Nobody really does. Hi, everybody. Um, jump scare for people who are watching the video episode. I'm wearing a headband today. It is a Sunday morning. She got a gorgeous Saturday morning blow dry, and then those winds kicked in, and there was a very horizontal rainfall, which completely fucked up my hairline. And, you know, it's giving a little bit of a Lisa Vanderpump effect, which is not a compliment. There's there's a puff factor in the blow dry, and I just need the hair off the face. I'm sweating. I'm rashy. I'm also glowing. I did put on a tinted moisturizer, a sculpting, bronzer, and a highlight situation. I'm also wearing mascara. No eyelash extensions. Really broke the internet. And by broke the internet, I mean barely just moved the meter even slightly um, with my hot takes on eyelash extensions last week. So we're not, you know, we're just, we're not going to talk about it. Here's my truth. Um, last night, Andrew and I had a beautiful takeout penne alla vodka and a gorgeous super Tuscan. I'm a bit on the fritz with the lesbian community, I fear. Perhaps it was the tic-tac dyke of it all. I'm not sure. I was supposed to go last night to Fortune Feimster's uh, stand-up show in downtown LA. I was very excited. I bought a gorgeous top, a fire engine red top. Jackie Schimmel doesn't look good in a red. Something about the rosacea, it's just not my color, but I found this gorgeous Jacques Mousse red draped top that really does hide my postpartum rolls. And Jackie, body positivity, I will fuck you up. Don't. Uh, listen, I know that I'm naturally thin, but I am dealing with a bit of a midsection situation that I've never dealt with before, and I'm just trying to figure out how to navigate it gracefully by way of draped red Jacques Mousse excess fabric top. So I bought a new top. I had a dinner reservation. I was like, this is going to be a really good look for me to show up for my girl Fortune, you know? And then my fucking babysitter got stomach flu or food poisoning. And you know, I don't fuck with that. Although it would be nice if she came over, coughed in my mouth, and then tended to my child. But I was responsible. I thought, you know what? Let's not risk it. Stay home. Get the fuck away from me. So then I had to cancel last minute. I wasn't able to go to the show, but I was able to have a gorgeous penne alla vodka and watch. Wait. Okay. Listen. My grandparents were like, you need to watch this show with Annette Benning. I mean, that sounds like, you know, it's Annette Benning. It's got to be good. There's this show called Apples Never Fall. I don't know if that's the title. It's something with an apple and something with a fall. Apples that fall, falling apples. I love apples. Organic apples at the farmer's market. I don't know. Something about fucking apples, okay? I love Alison Brie. Um, so I'm just going to remove her from this hot take, this lukewarm take. It is, I, I've watched every episode. It is the worst show. It is the worst acting. I mean, Roger and Ebert over here. The acting is like so insanely bad that it's captivating. And I actually haven't finished it. I've got one more episode. But the fact that Annette Benning signed on the dotted line, I mean, everything, the casting was like from a Craigslist. Like I... I started pausing the show and then showing Andrew how I could do the scenes better. I was like, dad, Savannah needs to go. Like I just, I, I, that's, it's part of the allure of the show. So I kind, kind of highly recommend it because it's like, it's so bad that it's amazing. Anyways, I woke up this morning and I checked my notepads because I do sometimes after a Unisom, a martini and a penne a la vodka, I start seeing shit and 75% of the time I read my midnight notes and I think that I'm a low key genius. Like I will have the most thought provoking, insightful, just morsels of wisdom 
that really are pause for concern and make me like look inward and be like, oh my God, Jackie, maybe you are working with a full deck. Maybe you see some shit. Like maybe you're really on some philosophical Henry David Thoreau Socrates bullshit. Like mind blown. Like the depths of my soul are barren in this beautiful note memo that I wrote at 3.18 a.m., not last night. I was having some weird kinky ass dreams. And by kinky, I mean just like weird. Inception, fucking sea life, mammals, blood, canned tuna fish. I won't even get into it. It's fucking weird. I opened my notepads this morning because I was like trying to think of things that I could talk about so I don't just ramble endless, endlessly into a fucking microphone with a goddamn headband on like a dumb fuck. And this was all that was written. <clears throat> I'm not joking. Uh, do jellyfish live in lakes? Do they? I don't know. I don't want to Google it. I don't want it on my search history. But that's what I was thinking about last night. Do jellyfish live in lakes? Why? I don't know. No context. That's all she wrote. <sighs> Let's talk about Kate Middleton. Because I feel like an asshole. And I feel like I wasn't even on the witch hunt for Kate Middleton. But I think that this is a, a unifying moment in society where we can all just take a deep inhale, exhale, and be like, wow, we really are assholes. And for what? Like, what's our mission statement? Yes, Kate Middleton was off the grid for a couple months. But how, I, I'm talking about myself personally here. How did I not think, hmm, maybe she's having like a severe medical issue and she needs time to heal. You know, I'm like gastric bypass, lap band, liposuction, cool sculpting gone wrong. Why did I not think, huh, maybe she's going through something. It's because I have a lack of empathy. And now that I'm saying it out loud, that's completely why. Self-awareness is the rhythm of my dance floor. But how did we not, as a society, think, hmm, maybe something's really wrong and maybe, like, this isn't fodder for the gram. I was an active participant. I feel terrible. And now we're doing apology memes. Like, we need to pump the brakes. Like, there has to be some form of a line. She doesn't owe us anything. By the way, we live in fucking America. We don't have a royal family here. Like, why are we so satiated and hungry and, and ravenous for things that are so external to us? It's really, and do jellyfish live in lakes? It's one in the same. <laughs> it's all the same. You know, so I feel terrible for Kate Middleton. I hope she stays off the grid, tends to her family. The fact that she even has to put on a sensible J. Crew boat neck, you know, Montauk adjacent sweatshirt, relatable as ever, with a gorgeous, just perfectly, a perfect blow dry, and look into camera and tell us that she's been diagnosed with cancer so that we all shut the fuck up and stop generating memes. But then on the other side of that, then Daily Mail hits you with, Kim Kardashian's been awfully silent since her Kate Middleton diss. It wasn't a diss. Come on. Shut the fuck up. Like, we gotta just, we need to get off the ride and give her and her family some space for motherfucking healing. And that's what I think about that. I have not watched the Nickelodeon documentary. I really want to watch it. But like the Amanda Bynes of it all, it's too close to home. I sat next to Amanda Bynes at a Baja Fresh when I was seven. And it was the highlight of the first decade of my life. Like nobody loved Amanda Bynes. Like I loved Amanda Bynes. And just the toxic Nickelodeon shit. I don't know that I have the durability for it. I don't know that I have the stomach for it. I want to escape on a sofa. I don't want to I don't want to see behind the curtain. I want to live in the dark. I had to take the headband off. It was just throwing my whole shit off. I looked like a substitute teacher in the wrong school district. So now we're just like free balling it with this wispy just brittle blow dry just whipping my hair back and forth like Willow Smith. By the way, last night Andrew said to me, "Have you heard the new Willow Smith song?" I said, Alas, Andy, I have not. The only, I mean, wait a minute, uh, meet me at our spot, 
whip my hair back and forth. I'll whip my hair back and forth. I'll whip my hair back and forth. I fucking love that song. I'd make that my ringback tone if I could. Bring back ringback tones. Um, she has this new song. I cannot remember what it's fucking called. It's amazing. And Andrew said to me, Willow Smith is low-key, high-key, the fucking shit. And I agree. Her music, I'm a tastemaker. It's fucking cool as hell. And one would think that Willow Smith being a nepotism baby, you know, the Will and Jada of it all, she would be overrated. But I think quite the contrary. I think she's underrated. And I'm here to spread the gospel of Willow Smith. Just an aside, just a hot tip for the girlies at home. Speaking of me being just finger on the pulse uh, musical prodigy, Somebody's packing her chain mail halter top and headed to Viva Las Vegas on Tuesday. Andrew said to me last week, he's like, listen, I've been working with this artist. He's a good friend of mine. He's performing in Vegas. Like, I really want you to come and meet him. Andrew left me for dead to go record with him in Vegas. And he's like, he's a great guy. You're going to love him. I said, Andrew, why don't you just go? Because I can really only do one social event per month where I'm really like, you know, on Otherwise, I just, I don't have it in me anymore. I'm, I'm just a full-blown hermit. I want to be on my sofa. I want to be in a sensible pajama set with a beautiful martini and my fireplace and my candles and my flowers. And I just want to watch, honestly, and no shtick, I want to watch like eight hours of television a day, every day for the rest of my life. And I want to speak to nobody so I want to speak to no one for at least three months out of the year, like compiled. In my days, I just don't want to talk to anyone. And all I do is talk. I can't shut the fuck up everywhere I go. I'm like, so where are you from? How are you doing? Like, how old are you? Are you seeing anyone? God, you're so cute. Like, I've got some cute guys for you. What's your Instagram handle? Well, how long did you work here? What's your favorite thing on the menu? Do you like the base scallops? You know, I just can't get into scallops unless they're raw. I love a sushi scallop. I, I just, I, I can't shut the fuck up everywhere I go. It's so exhausting and I hate myself, but I love it about me, but I hate it about me. This is all very insular. This is disgusting. We're moving right along. Anyways, I'm going to Vegas on Tuesday with my husband because he wants me to come with me. He's like, Jackie, please. It means a lot to me that you come with me. And I was like, wow, you're obsessed with me. Grow a pair. Gross. So being the supportive wife that I am, we're chucking the child and headed to Vegas for a, you know, 18-hour spree. I haven't been to Vegas in years. I think the last time I was in Vegas, ooh, I'm going to have PTSD. I did a live podcast at the Life is Beautiful Music Festival, and I was added to the lineup late. So my, like, people weren't able to even, like, buy a ticket. Like, I wasn't able to tap in to an audience. And we were in the only air-conditioned venue in August in Las Vegas, and the amount of longboard shorts, tank tops, and white Oakley sunglasses in the audience, they were all there just to, like, come down from their Molly trip and like get a little AC before they ooh, 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 to David fucking Guetta, okay? So I'm just like with a sea of dudes from fucking Reno. And it was, it was bombing like you've never bombed before. It was awful. There was a clock in the back of the um, venue. And I, there was a point in time where I was like, maybe I should just do the ABCs for the next 36 minutes or just count 36, 35, 34, like I had nothing left to say. Nothing was working. I was like, let's do a QA. and a And then it was just getting roasted and it did not land well. And then I started like hyper roasting the audience and I was like, oh, sick. I got fucking paid to be here. Okay, Brendan, you're in a fucking Quicksilver board short from, you know, the clearance section at your local fucking Macy's in Reno. You're sitting here and I don't give a fuck, okay? Are you going to go fucking dry hump for your fraternity, bro? David Guetta later? Sick, bro. Suck a dick. Like, I just, I could, I really lost it. And I remember looking up and seeing Andrew in the side, and he was just going, Whew. like, he did, like, a deep exhale. And I was like, I think, I think we're good here on the touring. Haven't been out since. So, you know, scarred for life. But I'm excited to go to Vegas. 
Maybe I'm going to like hit up a buffet. I want to do all the Vegas things. Once you have a kid like and you get out in the wild for 24 hours and you know you don't have to like wake up or like be, you know, functioning, like maybe I'll maybe I'll try hard drugs. I'm kidding. I'm joking. Zero desire. Zero desire. Everyone's saying, "Jackie, you should try shrooms. You should microdose shrooms." I don't want to, and I especially don't want to in Las Vegas. I'm already too, like, foaming at the mouth, doing stimmy circles in the casino. The ding, ding, and the cold, and the smoke, and the drinks, and the clank, clank. Like, I can't, I can't do it. I need AirPods. I need a cool wind. I need a headband. I may be terrible at starting new habits that are healthy, but I found that even if I can't hit all my health and wellness goals, I can certainly force Leo slash Richard to. And that feels almost as good. The Farmer's Dog makes feeding real healthy dog food easy and convenient, and your dog is going to absolutely love it. We switched Leo over to the Farmer's Dog, I don't know, two or three years ago, and it was like he had a full-blown rebirth. His skin was healthier, all of his little ailments, his issues, yeast infections just disappeared. Go figure. His coat is shinier. His digestive system has just been delicious. It was like a new dog, okay? The Farmer's Dog makes and delivers fresh, healthy dog food right to your door. It's developed by vets, nutritionally balanced, and made from real meat and veggies to the safety standards of human food. So if you've ever had the freaky little urge to try your pet's food, now's your chance, honey. The Farmer's Dog also sends the food pre-portioned specifically for your dog based on their unique nutritional needs, which makes it easy to help your dog maintain their ideal weight. And dogs at a healthy weight can live up to two and a half years longer than overweight dogs, meaning more Leo for us, which we love. You can get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash Bible. Plus, you're going to get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash Bible to get 50% off. That is thefarmersdog.com slash Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up. How much do you think about bras? Probably more than you'd like to. Since having Clyde, I think about my tits all the time because they're all over the place. But thanks to Honey Love, I never have to think about underwires, bulky fabrics that trap heat, hello swamp tits, or any other bra bullshit. <laughs> Honey Love has revolutionized the bra game by making bras with supportive bonding that eliminates the need for underwire without sacrificing lift. For a limited time only, you can get Honey Love on sale. You're going to get 20 percent off your entire order with our exclusive link honeylove.com forward slash bible i am wearing one right now hot tip for the girlies get 20 percent off your entire order with our exclusive link that is honeylove.com forward slash bible support our show and check them out at honeylove.com forward slash bible i think shapewear is Hot take, oppressive. I would rather drown myself in a vat of boiling lava than ever try to squeeze my ass into Spanx again. It's not happening. But Honey Loves bras are made with fabric that is so soft, it feels like a second skin. My personal favorite is their crossover bra. Not only is it as comfortable as the rest of their bras, but it has a sexy little mesh detailing that I absolutely love, and it doesn't stop there. Honey Love also has incredibly comfortable shapewear, tanks, and leggings, so you're going to feel supported head to toe and comfortable. Treat yourself to the best bras on the market and save 20% off at honeylove.com forward slash Bible. Use our exclusive link to get 20% off honeylove.com forward slash Bible. After your purchase, they ask you where you heard about them. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. Treat yourself to honey love because you deserve it. As I was just doing my ad reads, I kind of felt um, a bit of a restricted blink in my right eye, which I haven't had since I survived conjunctivitis abroad. And I just had the realization that I have not worn mascara until the conjunctivitis hit, and now I'm freaking out because are, are you supposed to throw away everything that touched your infected eyeball? Because I just put mascara on and I am feeling roughage underneath the retina. Like, doesn't it die after a certain point in time? Oh, it's my favorite mascara. God damn it. I swear to fucking God, if I roll through to Vegas and I have fucking pink eye again, I am going to light my house on fire. I'm going to take a bath in gasoline, 
and then I'm going to light my body on fire because I can't deal with the secretions. Not once more. Not one more time. Although it would be cute if I hopped over to the Paris Hotel and then took a photo with Pink Eye again just to, you know, really joie de vivre the situation. Whatever. Have you seen Nicola Peltz's TikTok account? Speaking of wanting to light your body on fire, I know that we've talked shit about her before. Actually, fun throwback, Justin Anderson, who used to color my hair, um, who's just a doll, I asked him years ago, I said, who is the worst celebrity that you've ever worked with? And he said, Nicola Peltz. And there was no hesitation. He was happy to say it. I'm not throwing him under the bus because this is all readily available in Vintage Bitch Bible episodes, which I not only dare implore you, but I highly recommend you never fucking listen to. The first three years of me podcasting, and I do feel we're having a bit of a regression while I figure out this camera situation because, you know, the lights, the lights, the lights. She doesn't live for the lights. But the first three years of the Bitch Bible podcast are devastating for me personally. And if I, you know was a more curated human, I would completely wipe them from the internet because they're they're that bad. They are as cringe as cringe gets. They are forced. They are contrived. They are desperate, roachy, sad, dismal, mediocre, pathetic, and delusional. Terrible. They're absolutely terrible. But I can't take them down. And Justin Anderson did say that. So um, it's just, it's something to watch. It's it's a sight to behold. It is, whatever she's on, I would like some. Because I'm yearning and lusting for the glaze. I want to live glazed. I don't know how. I'm tweaking the fuck out. I'm twitching constantly and pussing from both of my eyeballs. But to achieve that level of, um, well, lacking self-awareness and just hovering at the lowest volume consistently, maybe that's an easier way to live. My Roman Empire is Brooklyn Beckham and Nicola Peltz's wedding drama. They went through three wedding planners, then there was like a lawsuit and then text messages released of Nicola Peltz losing her fucking shit on the wedding planner, being like, this RSVP list is not correct. David can't come. Why is he on the list? Like all capitals, like scream texting at these wedding planners. And she's like, LOL, I'm so sorry. Like I'm a, I'm a wedding planner, not a tech wizard. And Nicola Peltz is just, she's had enough. She's to the fucking brim. And I was like, honestly, I like this for her. I thought we were doing a pulse check on Nicola. But then you read those text messages and you're like, oh, something is brewing. Something is brewing behind those eyeballs. Her and Selena just... Very, I'm trying to be nice, very even-tempered, if you know what I'm saying. Let's talk about Bella Hadid's morning routine because, wow, it really broke the internet last week, did it? Not at all. She went on the Tickety Talks and she did her morning routine with all the tinctures, 18 vitamins, and I just had a flashback of Yolanda in her little medical closet at her Wilshire condo and the Munchausen of it all, which I would never touch, but... It feels like a very lengthy, extensive morning routine. She's taking every vitamin. They actually ran the numbers with it, and it looks like her morning routine costs around $700. I'm going to give you my morning routine, my honest morning routine. First, I've, for the past few weeks, I've been doing little blank checks because there is – There's a little bit of an adhesive at the lash line with the right eye. I'm going to go see a doctor this week because I don't, the pink eye, it should be fully flushed out of my system. And granted, I have been using, well, I've been using the mascara today and I've been using like a variation of makeup brushes, eyeshadow brushes, et cetera, that may have been infected. So that's on me. Maybe that's a simple fix. But I just want to make sure that I'm not like going to go full Helen Keller because, I mean, once again, I would lean into it. I'd make it funny. You know, when life throws you lemons, you make pink eye lemonade. But, you know, I it could be on the horizon for me. I've been making Helen Keller jokes since I was seven. So that's not great. But my morning routine, I wake up. I usually yell at Andrew to go get the baby. I'm like, Andrew. 
it's your turn. He's like, bitch, it's your turn. I'm like, it's your turn. If it's before seven, I force Andrew to go tend to the child. And then I get ready. And then I'm, I'm there. And I'm present. Hands on mama bear. Roar. What sound does a bear make? Grr. <laughs> Do jellyfish live in lakes? Do they, though? I won't ask. And I won't Google. They can't. Because it's a sea creature. So they have to live in the ocean, right? Right. Um, I wake up. I get my matcha. I pour it over ice. I usually will put on like a sensible shelf bra because I don't want to scare everybody with the gravitational situation of my tits. I play with the baby. I feed him some food. I made broccoli tots last week. I made broccoli tots. I made breakfast, lunch, and dinner on Thursday for my little fucking demon seed. And he's living up to the name. He's kind of a fucker. Like, he's so cute. It hurts. But he's kind of like a low-key asshole. And thank God he's so fucking cute. Because there are moments where I'm like, mm, this is like very, very difficult for me. Like, I, at the end of the day, I'm just, like, I'm just not having fun. You know, even like the sweet little moments, I'm, I've, I have to glaze for survival mode at a certain point in the day when I'm with him, sunrise to sunset, there is, you know, you start at a full battery and a full tank and then midday, you know, you're running at like 50% and then at the end of the day, I'm pretty happy to fucking punt him off into that Lucite crib. You know what I mean? And the bedtime, sometimes it creeps up a little earlier. If Andrew's out of town and I'm, you know, stuck with the child, maybe we go night night at 545, you know, because I just I just need to breathe. I need the space. And he's a needy little cancer, you know, but um, I make broccoli dots now. So breakfast, lunch and dinner. I made him an orzo pasta with like a homemade fucking roasted tomato sauce. I made him banana pancakes with a banana and a fucking egg and almond flour. And then I added his little vitamins to it. And then I made him fucking broccoli tots. I steamed broccoli. I pureed them. I made little chewable patties, two fingers wide, and then I baked them with ghee. Like, I, I fucking can't. My morning routine, I shower every single morning. I shower three times a day. I immerse my body in three bodies of water. So L-A-D-W-P, roll the fuck through. I deserve it. Um, I shower in the morning. I shower at five. And then I either do a nightcap shower and or bath situation. Another thing that I would not like to say on microphone, but I'm going to say it. Clyde and I have been bathing together. I put on a sensible one piece <laughs> and a headband and it's kind of the cutest thing ever. I fill the bathtub up and then I just lay him on my chest and we have a very Tamara and Eddie bathtub and it's the highlight of my day. I put rose petals, Sade, Sweetest Taboo. I lower the lights, ambient lighting, and it's just a beautiful end to the day. I don't really have a morning routine. I fucking shower. I throw the kid in his crib around nine. I drink one and a half liters of an iced matcha, no added sweetener. I take a rogue vitamin here and there, and that's fucking it. I'm kind of like all the tinctures and all of the things. I know people that really swear by like, the vitamins and the this and then the pine bark and then the turmeric and then you take the oregano oil and then the apple cider, cider vinegar and then you journal and then the breath work. I don't do any of that shit, okay? Zilch. I fucking shower and I put some creams on my goddamn face and once in a while, I'll hit it with an oregano oil. Maybe I take a turmeric shot. That's it. If it ain't broke, don't fucking fix it. Too many things. I think confuses the body. I keep it simple. Keep it simple. You know what this little lassie does not miss? The vicious week before the period when I felt like crawling out of my skin. Skin that was covered in pimples, mind you, and the cravings of a I could have eaten my own flesh if it was rolled in batter. 
and deep fried with a tepanade, okay? Luckily, it's easier to manage PMS with Astra Control. Astra Control is a formula developed by Happy Mammoth, a supplement company dedicated to making women's lives easier. Estra Control contains science-backed herbal extracts that help support hormonal health, especially in women who suffer from PMS. Ding, 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 this girly. Fun fact, our body's hormones are processed in the liver, and when estrogen isn't processed well in the liver, women may start having PMS and all the miserable symptoms that come with it. Estra Control's ingredients help support the liver to reduce these symptoms so women can feel like themselves all throughout the month. Estra Control is made specifically for women who are premenopausal, so it's perfect for women that haven't entered menopause yet. In fact, it's amazing for perimenopause when hormones start to fluctuate and PMS can turn into a beast. For a limited time, you're going to get 15% off your entire first order at happymammoth.com. Just use the code Jackie at checkout. We've all heard of the health benefits of fasting, but have you ever just felt like not eating is not for me. Then Prolon is for you. Prolon is a revolutionary plant-based nutrition program that nourishes the body while making cells believe they're fasting. Researched and developed for decades at the University of Southern California Longevity Institute and backed by leading U.S. medical centers, Prolon helps promote healthy blood sugar, support cardiovascular health, and reduce abdominal fat. If I was going to start a nutrition program, Prolon is exactly what I'd use. It's convenient, it's backed by Nobel winning science, and it works. I highly recommend Prolon's five day program. I have friends that swear by this, by this. Sorry, you guys, the tongue is just, I mean, it's too big for my mouth. The Prolon five day program includes snacks, soups, and beverages, all designed to keep your body in a fasting state. With Prolon, you get everything you need pre packaged and ready to go. Each order of Prolon's five day program comes with five boxes labeled by day so you know what to eat each day. It's unlike anything you've ever experienced, okay? And right now, Prolon is offering the Bitch Bible listeners 10% off their five day nutrition program. So go to prolonlife.com slash Bible. Bible. That's Prolon Life, P R O L O N Life.com slash Bible for this special offer. That is Prolon Life.com slash Bible. I listened to the new Sharp Right Ariana Grande album front to back a couple times yesterday, and I have some thoughts. Uh, first of all, I just love her and her little ponytail, okay? Obviously, she's served up some bops. We've got Yes And, we have Bye, which I think is like the sleeper hit of the album, and the Robin adjacent We Can't Be Friends, or whatever it's fucking called, which is, you know, it's a diet bop for me. People are really losing their minds for it, from it. But when you grew up peak early 2000s, we had the best like sultry ambient revenge pop anthem music for females and also like 90s like I I will die on the hill of Alanis Morissette no doubt Robin um Ariana Grande has pipes she's in her musical theater era it is also important to mention that Ariana Grande is from fucking Boca Raton we don't talk about it enough. I feel like she's had all of these different metamorphoses, okay? She was kind of in her over, she was kind of in her like Cuban link choker, oversized sweatshirt, thigh high boot era, okay? Around Pete Davidson. Now she's Glinda. Is it Glenda or is it Glinda? I've never seen Wicked. I just have a LimeWire MP3 of Defying Gravity that I used to cry to in high school with Kristen Chenoweth and Adele Azim. That's all I know about fucking Wicked. Never saw it. Not a huge patron of the theater, okay? I was too busy watching fucking The O.C. and Melrose Place. When Marsha Cross shaved her head, I was like six years old, and it, it fucked me up. Also Saved by the Bell, when Jesse Spano had her, is that her name? Jesse Spano? Yes. When Jesse Spano had her caffeine addiction and is clutching her pills, going, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so. 
And then Zach Morris rushes to her. I mean, these are cultural moments that I replay over in my head. It's the head shave and it's the Jesse Spano. My overall review, because everyone's just dying to know, of the Ariana Grande album, I think there we've got a, a few like soft bops. I wasn't blown away. And I know, I know. Me and Andrew listened to it together and I was like, okay, like it's good. It's it's an easy listen, but it's not a, it's not Jagged Little Pill. It's not gripping. I thought Olivia Rodrigo's album was really good. Both of them, start to finish, a beautiful listen. Um, and you know, we shouldn't compare women or people, but we fucking do all the time. All the time. Life is about comparisons, okay? It's not lovely to say, but that's the way the fucking world works. It's how, it's the axis on which we rotate. It's not great, it's not woke, it's not of the times, but we're all fucking doing it, and who cares? You know, put on your dolphin shorts and hit the, hit, get running, for fuck's sake. We're all on the marathon, okay? It's about just learning to be comfortable if you're lagging a little bit or you're speeding up. That's what I always say. And like I always say, I do say this a lot in the privacy of my home to Andrew, and it kind of always works and people, it really shuts people down because it's so simple and so stupid that people just don't question it and it's applicable to every conversation. Write this down. I say, you know what, Andrew? Winners win and losers lose. And isn't it just so true? I don't really know what it means, but it sounds so good when I say it. And every time I've dropped it in a conversation of any capacity, it takes people's breath away. Probably because it's so fucking stupid, but hey, winners win and losers lose. Ooh, vag tings for fuck's sake. I put a lip gloss on and I really feel like I have a new lease on life. Also, I had to go to our old townhouse to pick up some mail and I found myself just lingering in the front of the house, waiting, hoping, praying that maybe, just maybe on this sacred Sunday, I would catch a glimpse of the Share Bear Extraordinaire Nair. If you're new here, uh, Cher Bear was my amputee neighbor. She had one arm and during the depths of COVID really took me on a fucking bender because one day she just didn't have an arm. And then I found her. I didn't found her. I didn't found her. I didn't find her. I was um, delicately stalking from a distance and I found her reaching for a bin with both fucking arms and both fucking hands, and dare I say it, a tingle in the phalanges. And then I was like, whoa, 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 shimmel, shimmel, what's going on? Does she have an arm? Does she not have an arm? Does she have a jazz hand prosthetic? I don't know. But I miss Cher Bear Extraordinaire Nair, and, you know, I feel like we didn't get closure when I moved. It happened very suddenly, and I didn't get to say goodbye, and I just sometimes late at night close my eyes and I dream of her just tickling my back with her good arm, you know, just a one-hand tickle and a pat on the back to boot. So I found myself kind of like lingering in the front and I was like, ugh, what solace and joy it would give me to see her peering down from her window, looking at me with my baby in the car, getting my fucking mail and her just giving me a solo you know, a one-armed little wave. Like, that's what my soul needs. I'm not sure that she ever wants to see my face again. But, you know, I miss that little tripod. You know, that tri-armed triumph. You know what's better than four limbs? <laughs> Three. It's not good, guys. It's not good. Fuck. I've been doing a lot of self-reflecting and quality control recently. And, you know, it's just she needs time. She just needs time. I was also listening back to Parisian Secretion, and the name dropping was atrocious. Now, I want you to know that was not intentional. I was not 
actually name dropping. It's when you're low on content, you just kind of circle the drain and you just beat that dead horse till it can't nay, nay, no more. That's what that was. I just wanted to be, you know, transparent and honest that I do listen back and, um, you know, it's perturbing sometimes. And this is why we drink. Anywho, everybody, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Get ready to hold on to your side bangs and just get that Vaseline ready because those thighs are going to be chafing, honey. Skinny jeans are back. I read this on The Cut or something. I don't know. Who cares? Allegedly, okay, because I am a woman of legal jargon, allegedly skinny jeans are back in session. They're on the horizon and, you know, everyone can rejoice. Now, I am so far removed from the skinny jean of it all. I was so shamed for the skinny jeans. You know, millennials basically were walking around with like a scarlet letter because we were still clutching under our skinny jeans. And now that I have some, you know, foresight or hindsight or any form of eyesight that's not clouded with mucus, I can see the light And I really feel that skinny jeans are not for me ever again. I don't want a crunchy denim around my ankle. You know, I think that now in my postpartum bod, skinny jeans maybe aren't for me. And granted, I do carry my weight in my midsection. I'm like, this is my body type. And I feel like this is just the universe punishing me because I've been body shaming both my son. His body shape is just that of a ball, a bowling ball. Andrew is that of a pear. I've always said my pear shaped prints. Now my body type currently is a bit of a, it's an olive in the middle of a toothpick. You know, the legs are lanky, the limbs are noodly, the midsection is bloated, and it's all good. It's fine. But I, you know, a skinny jean is nice to accentuate the thigh gap and a fragile ankle, which I do have very fragile ankles. But I just think that maybe something with a little more wiggle room in the calf is just universally more flattering. I like, dare I say, a baggier jean. Little, little tank tops, baggy, baggy jeans, lots of chains, mixed metals, okay? And a wispy blow dry to fucking boot. But I guess they're coming back, so we gotta roll with the motherfucking times. It's all happening. Also, home renovation update. I feel like everyone is really just on the edge of their fucking seat with my exterior paint color. I think... I think we've narrowed it down to two. Okay, this is very niche content for my older girlies. I think we're going white flower or perhaps Greek villa. I was really um, smitten with Benjamin Moore's Swiss coffee. The name was throwing me off, and I do think it's giving a bit. I have to stop saying it's giving. I'm perpetually eight months late to like any type of like cool um, colloquialisms. Is that what they call them? But Swiss coffee, it's it's a little buttery. It's a little yellow. And then I had, you know, just a mini mental breakdown because I wanted to switch out all the sconces because, you know, it's it's a fresh new beginning for the exterior of my home. So I'm thinking we do white flower, okay? And then some form of contrasting white trim. And then I thought, do I really just get my dick out, balls deep, and go for a unlacquered brass sconce? But I think it might be, it might be a little Z gallery. It might be a Rick Caruso property. It's, it, it might be the Grove. It's it's kind of like Americana at brand. I don't know if I can commit to a fully brass sconce in the exterior of my house. Now on the back side of my house, I would like something that's reminiscent of a, of a hurricane candle, warm light, like a hanging lantern. I said to Andrew, do you think that maybe we could get gas sconces with like a real fire flame? He said, Jackie, that's the worst idea. We are We are in the trenches of the Santa Monica mountain range. We are the Woolsey fires 2.0, just asking for it. Between my negligence of the stove and the oven, I've left the oven on 
for upwards of 72 hours, like on a semi-regular basis. I left the stove on the other day all day long on the highest setting, just not a care in the world. Knew I left it on, went to go feed the baby, came back in the kitchen, thought, oh, I'll get to that later. And then I just left the stove on all fucking day. And so maybe no on the gas line for the outdoor sconces, but you know, a girl can dream. She can't. She believed she could, but she didn't because she cares about the environment and the animals. Did you know that the average dieter will try 162 diets over the course of their lives? It totally makes sense because all these crazy diets and weight loss schemes end up being temporary. You pay a fortune and just a few months you gain it all back, but not with Sonabello. Sonabello is the only way to permanently lose unwanted fat in inches. Whether you've got stubborn tummy fat, hello, thigh fat, arm fat, any fat, Sonabello doctors are masters in micro laser fat removal and will make it all disappear in just one visit. No more feeling embarrassed, shy, and uncomfortable in your own skin. No more hiding in baggy clothes. With Sonabello, you can give yourself the gift of a full body reset because you deserve it. Schedule your free consultation and learn all about micro laser fat removal with Sonobello. And Sonobello is running a great special right now. Visit sonobello.com slash Bible. That is sonobello, S-O-N-O-B-E-L-L-O.com slash Bible. Listen up, campers. It's time to buckle up, pitch a tent, and take a hike. This is Camp Counselor's Podcast. With Zachariah Porter. And Jonathan Carson. Consider this podcast your new favorite variety show. Where the badges mean nothing. And the drama means everything. Is this podcast even about camping? No, but it is camp. (laughs) We cover everything. I have a theory that a chicken finger is the perfect chaser for a tequila shot. No, because at the end of the day, I was a child actor who fell victim to an audition scam. I'm going to be vulnerable for a second. Have you ever had to shop in a husky section at a department store? Then I don't want to hear it. Honestly, I can't talk about this anymore. I'm overstimulated and I'm bloated. (laughs) From weird news and our current obsessions to hot gossip and listener submitted confessions, nothing is off limits at this camp. New episodes of Camp Counselors drop every Monday and Wednesday. Listen wherever you get your podcast. Lights Lights out, campers. Now, I told you I will be going to the Teddy Swims concert in Las Vegas on Tuesday, but one concert I will not be attending is the Madonna concert. I love Madonna, Holiday, Lucky Star. I will tell you, kind of my favorite Madonna tracks are a little bit of the deeper cuts. I love Frozen. Um, nothing really matters. Love is all we need. Candy perfume girl, do not make me upload the clip of me at age seven seductively singing candy perfume girl into a tripod, okay, in my sister's bedroom in front of her twin fucking bed with her Laura Ashley diffusion target shabby chic duvet comforter with a ruffly duvet to boot. With a roughly Euro sham, do they sell Euro shams at Target? I'm not sure. But if they did, Ashley fucking had one. My sister. I love Candy Perfume Girl. I love, um, do you know what it feels like for a girl? I love that song. Ugh, beautiful. No, I don't even like Beautiful Stranger. I don't even know why I said that. Um, Nothing Really Matters, Frozen, Candy Perfume Girl. That whole Ray of Light album really did it for me in ways I can't express. But I've heard a lot of rumors about this Madonna concert. She goes on like two, three hours late. Somebody sued her in the East Coast because um, they went, they bought tickets to her concert. She shows up three hours late. They had a car service. Uh, They couldn't get home in time. They had to pay overtime for the sitter. They were late for work, whatever. I mean, I find that to be completely ridiculous and litigious, but whatever. I don't do anything after 9 p.m. I don't want to be anywhere or do anything after 9 p.m. for the remainder of my days, period. And if I am anywhere after 9 p.m., I'm probably not having fun. I will glaze. I will go full Nicola Ann pelts on your ass and I will pretend to be somewhere else and I got to shut the brain down because I need at least two to three hours of wind down time or I'm going to be up all night tossing and turning like recalling conversations and just five minutes to Watner, five minutes to Watner, like full rain woman energy. 
So I'm not going to go to the Madonna concert, but if I was going to go to the Madonna concert, I wish I was at a show a couple weeks ago where she kind of heckled an audience member to stand up, but they were... <laughs> I shouldn't laugh. It's fucked up, but it is funny. Okay. Uh, They were in a wheelchair and she's like, get up, come on, get off your feet. And the woman's like, bitch, I'm in a goddamn wheelchair. I can't. Madonna has since apologized, but you know, sometimes life hands you a little gift. I think that shit's funny. And if you don't, you probably shouldn't listen to this fucking podcast because it is a little bit funny. It's like, Going in for a high five with Cheryl, who's only got one fucking arm. It's like, patty cake, patty cake. Red Rover, Red Rover. Send Cher Bear right over with her one arm. The eyeball is itching. Do you see? It's, oh no. Oh no. It's happening. It's all coming back to me. Q Celine Dion. Oh, shimmel. Oh no. It's getting red. It's getting inflamed. Pink eye part, duh. I will be at the shops at Caesar's Palace on Tuesday, infecting all of the sunglasses from probably uh, maybe after a post-lunch cocktail. So from 2 p.m. to 3.30 p.m., I will be doing meet and greets at various uh, designer sunglass shops, just infecting, spreading my, my secretions all over the place. I was reading this article on the Turlet, um about Elizabeth Hurley, star of one of my favorite movies featuring Brendan Fraser, Bedazzled. What a ride. That's a great movie. I yearn for the early 2000s. I was talking about this with Andrew at lunch today. Like, I, just the music, okay? Which, by the way, Andrew said we were talking about the Willow Smith thing again because I was like, I mentioned it on my podcast. I gave her a free plug. Like, she fucking needs it. Andrew is saying that she plays bass. She is a, has a very, um, what did he say? He said her musical uh, like palette was very tasteful and like you can tell that she really, I don't know, I'm going to butcher it. And also, I don't fucking care. Let's get back to Bedazzled. Okay. I yearn for early 2000s jargon, music, television, and movies. And I often guffaw people who are like, oh, times of yesteryear because it just feels so old and pathetic and like not with the times. But if you are driving in your car, okay, and you are partaking in an iTunes shuffle escapade and you get hit at the right time with Taking Back Sunday's cute without the E, you want to scream in your car. It's, it's not great music, but it is a time capsule. Yesterday, um, postal service, such great heights came on. And I just remembered like, you know, trying to, I, I remembered ultralight tampons. It's the first thing I thought of. I was like, oh my God, I remember getting my period and like borrowing an ultralight tampon and listening to the postal service in my Volvo and with a bedazzled license plate to boot. Your girl had a bedazzled license plate, okay, that I got as a gift and I had till I was probably 20, which is just, it's not great, but it is nostalgic. And ugh, Coheed and Cambria, Favor House Atlantic, all of that shit. I would be in my car whipping and nay and through suburbia, ultra light tampons in tow, listening to fucking Taking Back Sunday. Your lipstick is collar, don't bother, Angel. I know exactly what goes on. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> oh, when I get emotional, my throat closes up. Those were the days, okay? With my fucking NYC lip gloss and my rosacea and my side bangs and 76 CNC <laughs> tank tops. I wore 14 tank tops. And I would listen to that music and just be like angsty and ultralights and fucking, oh, so good. So much fun. And then I'd go get like a vanilla decaf latte or something with my low rise jeans and my Uggs and my socks and just, oh, I miss it. What a time to be alive. What was I talking about? Fuck me in the butt, Elizabeth Hurley. So she was in a movie recently directed by her son, who's 21 years old. And in said movie, she was in some pretty racy 
sex scenes. Scenes that were maybe like slightly more, you know, NSF dubs, as the kids say, than any of her past work. And she said, the pull quote is, that she felt liberated and very comfortable performing in these sex scenes in front of her son. Now, when you say it out loud, it doesn't sound great. And I don't know how that quote could be misconstrued. It's a little creepy. I don't know that, you know, 21 years down the line, I would be comfortable performing sex scenes in front of my son. I think it's a little weird. It's reading a little childhood trauma, but you know, live, laugh, love. If it works for them, great. I think it's, I, I think it's a little bit gross and that's coming from me. So I don't know. Weird. Another thing I'd like to talk about now that I don't have to worry about running into her in the lobby. Um, the Kristen Cavallari boy toy, Montana boy, TikTok thing. Okay. I have zero problem with the age difference. Couldn't give less of a fuck. It has nothing to do with that. For me, it's it's the TikTok of it all. I went down a pretty toxic wormhole yesterday and was watching all of those videos. What what it is is talentless, okay? They st- there's four attractive dudes in trucker hats, okay? And a drawl, and they stand in a line and then they lip sync a song and then one by one they go off camera and they're just holding eye contact, and I don't really understand what the fuck's going on. Like, you're not dancing, you're not singing, you're not offering a service, a hot tip, a trick. You're just lip syncing in a fucking line in an unrenovated kitchen, okay? Cute, cute as a button, hot to trot. But that's what is bothering me. I just feel like, We should stop emboldening the mediocre. We should stop giving people gold stars on the forehead like, keep talking shit, you're making me famous. Yeah, but they're bringing in the bank, Jackie. I don't care. As a mother, here we go. I'm not sure if you heard I had a baby. I'm the only person in the world that ever had a baby. For someone who's like, I don't identify as a mother, I like to bring it up a lot and it's kind of gross and embarrassing. I gotta stop doing that. What kid? If my son, 24 years down the line, was arranging his motherfucking tripod, okay, with a ring light and queuing up that music, okay, that audio dub to look into a camera and lip sync and, you know, give us like bedroom eyes, I I would, I'd whack him. I would. I'd be like, listen, you little fuck, okay? I did not bleed out under the hot lights in front of a microphone, selling my soul for years to provide a life for you, to then watch you Amazon Prime a motherfucking tripod and a ring light, okay, to lip sync at 30 second intervals, somebody else's music. Maybe, is it their music? I don't think so. I'll do a fact check and I'll issue an apology if I'm incorrect next week. But there has to be some threshold here. Like I would be dare I say, disappointed. I want my son to be, I would love it if he like scored animated films. That's my dream for him. Or, or, or anything, a botanist. I mean, he's never going to make it to college with Andrew and I's genes. So I've got to just kind of lower the bar for him and my expectations, but anything that had some type of skill, Anything that has a skill attached to it, I'd be fucking stoked. If he wants to be the assistant manager of a fucking Home Depot, okay, and he just loves indoor plants, I'd be thrilled for him. That's a lie. I'm lying. I'd be a little, be like, really? Like, okay, like, not a Lowe's? Not a Lowe's. You know who's never stepped foot in a fucking Lowe's? Me. I went to the Home Depot twice last week. Twice. Why? Looking for discount Audrey Ficuses. I don't think I have the allure in the streets of the Home Depot like I had while I was pregnant. Something about the estrogen or the pheromones or something, or maybe it was just like my tits and my snatched jawline and my glow. I was killing, I was sweeping Home Depot. 
okay? Talk about secretions everywhere. Now, I walked in there and I was feeling like kind of good about myself and I was whipping this weave around looking for those Audrey ficuses. Not a blink, not a care. Really hurt my feelings. Maybe I do need to pop over to Lowe's. I feel like it's just, I like a, I like a crusty Home Depot. I feel like the men are just more rural. Lowe's feels too highbrow for me. <laughs> and the lighting concept at the Home Depot, I like the industrial energy of the cement and the high ceilings. Lowe's feels fluorescent. It's not my lighting concept. But I'll try it out and I'll report back, okay? Because I'm a journalist. I have to go tend to my eyeball right now um, because if you're watching the video, it is getting progressively <laughs> more inflamed <laughs> as the seconds go on. But um, if you would like to subscribe to the Bitch Bible video, which you probably don't, um, unless you're in the market for pussing retinas, please go to youtube.com forward slash bitch Bible. I'm not sure if that's the link. You know, just get resourceful and figure it out and don't be so fucking comfortable asking and burdening people with questions that you have all the access to find the answers to. Thank you very much. Give us five stars on iTunes, please. God bless you. And I will chat with you next week. Winners win and losers lose. And this dumb bitch is losing. Goodbye. <laughs>